Today we are going to visit one of the most mystical places in Central Europe, an estate that besides regular tourists has been visited by priests, monks, magicians and Freemasons. We are finally heading to Kuks. Okay, we've arrived to Kuks. So our plan is to take a tour. It would be cool to show you the pharmacy that they have inside. Also have uh, very nice gardens around Cooks. No, you can see it already. Over there. And uh, then we'll just uh, walk around and uh, go to one very, very special and mysterious place, but you will see it later. Kuks is a small estate located in Hradec Kralova region, around 130 kilometers away from the Czech capital. If you are perplexed by the strange name of this place like me, apparently Kuks comes from the old German word for smelting and mine yielding. Well, we are gonna do a great deal of digging today into Cook's history. We were extremely fortunate to be able to visit and film the interiors of the estate. But first, let's explore and talk about a man who built it all. Count Franz Anton von Spork. This man was a mystery and also quite a weird individual. I mean, who would keep a skull of his own dead mother next to his bedside, as well as a huge painting of his dead wife. Clearly something was wrong with him. Count Spork was a very unusual aristocrat. Other aristocrats were kind of looking down at him and his family because they were not as old of a dynasty as uh, some other ones in the Holy Roman Empire. Franz was actually only second count in his family after his father, who acquired this uh, title after one of his military victories over Turks. And even though Franz was very educated and well-spoken and really rich, he was not really fitting in with other aristocrats that lived in Prague, so he was more of an outcast. So I think after a while he retrieved to his rural residence and enjoyed his aristocratic title here. You are very cute. Very cute you are. Very cute. It wants to pet. But it has the collar. It has the collar. It's somebody else's kitten. Mm -hmm. Spork spent his youth in England, Holland and France, and we can clearly see that the French style of architecture made a huge impression on him. I mean, doesn't it all look like Versailles to you? Everything is so symmetrical, there is a huge herbal garden, and these long flights of stairs definitely remind us of famous French palace. But these buildings were not used as the Count's residence, they were used as the retirement home and the hospital. A very fancy one, obviously. But of course, the main gem of Cook's is this beautiful gallery of Baroque statues and if those remind you of statues from Charles Bridge you have an eye for art because they were created by one of the most prolific sculptors of Charles Bridge. He created this beautiful gallery of vices and virtues or virtues and vices. <laughs> you might be thinking why would they put those statues next to the hospital? What I'm about to say will sound a bit strange for modern people but uh, back then hospitals were not made to cure patients. I know that sounds weird. Hospitals were created to ease the soul, to help with suffering. That's why monks were taking care of the sick there. So maybe that's why they had such a high mortality rate back in the day. Anyway, these statues were put here for contemplation. So they were not just for aesthetic purposes, they were also the remedy for the spirit. All right, let's go inside. We recommend taking a tour inside of Cook's complex because you will be able to see the second oldest pharmacy in the Czech Republic, which looked absolutely amazing. as well as the Gallery of Dancing Death. It is a corridor decorated with murals that depict death. Very life reassuring for a hospital and a former retirement house. 
Cook's complex is very impressive, but it's only half what, what it used to be. Count Spork also built a spa house on the opposite side of the river, but it was all destroyed by the flood. When it was there, though, it was quite apparent that this clever count created his own estate dichotomy, a hospital with a church on one side and a chateau with a spa house on the other. You could literally cross the bridge from the world of secular entertainment and intrigues to the side of death, philosophy, and spirituality. This almost palpable dualism of Cook's has led people to believe that Count Spork had some hidden motives when he was constructing this place. There were rumors that Count Spork was a legendary founder of the Freemasons Lodge of Bohemia. At least that's what the book said up until 1970s. And it was true that even before Second World War, Freemasons would visit Cook's and lay flowers here for the Count. Of course, there are no real proofs of the fact, but it's true that the Count had some strange habits. For example, after every ball, when his guests were already tired after dancing, they would uh, all go on the balcony of his chateau, which was located on the opposite side of the river, with the view of this complex. And the only light that they could see in the darkness of the nights was the light of his family tomb right below where we are. So they were all staring at it at night in complete silence for minutes. <laughs> which seems to go with his uh, cult and obsession with death. And uh, another habit comes to mind. He would sign all of his letters with Fagus, which stood for Franz Anton Graf von Spork. Fagus. But in Latin, Fagus also means beach. And no, not the sandy beach, but the tree, which is like the symbol of wisdom. It is quite evident that Cook's is not your typical chateau. It is also not a very typical hospital. Don't get me wrong, hospitals can be quite interesting architecturally, but I haven't been to a hospital that had such a plethora of biblical symbols carved into beautiful art, and it was so eccentric. This place truly has the spirit of Count Spork, if the tales of his extravagant character are true. Speaking of which, so it's uh, safe to say that the Count was very quirky, but he also had another character trait that we wanted to bring up in this video. The Count was very dramatic. Instead of solving some simple situation, he would blow it out of proportion. So so what happened was that uh, Count's neighbors were the Jesuits, and the Jesuits were a very powerful order. Back then, especially in 17th century, everybody knew not to mess with them, but uh, he did. So what happened is that the Count wanted to make another kind of relaxing area in the Cook's uh, estate, and it was supposed to be a forest filled with beautiful statues from his uh, loyal sculptor, Brown. But one of the statues was put on the land of the Jesuits, so the Count literally crossed the border there. And the Jesuits got upset and then they had an argument. And suddenly it was an argument not just with those Jesuits who were his neighbors, but with all Jesuits that ever existed. The Jesuits sent a special inspection to the estate and they investigated the books and the Count's library. He had over 40,000 volumes there, and uh, some of these books were apparently heretical. So the Count was almost put to prison and executed for heresy. But fortunately, he got away with it. He basically bailed himself out, paid some fine, and was okay in the end. And to finish our visit to Cook's, we decided to take a walk through the forest to Bethlehem, a unique place where nature and art connect. It was quite a long walk, plus it just rained, so everything was super muddy. We don't recommend taking this hike if you don't have comfortable shoes with you. Don't trust <laughs> the internet. <laughs> so after about an hour of walking, you arrive to a small place where you see statues carved into stone in the middle of the forest. They were created by the same renowned architect Brown and they portrayed the biblical scenes. Overall, it is a nice, tranquil place that was created for your meditations in nature. And it was a great ending for our trip. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye! The, dum the dumplings for Jesus. Uh, okay, again, we are gonna get in trouble one day. <laughs> Why? What's wrong about dumplings? Nothing, nothing. Oh, and this must be baby Jesus. That's kind of creepy what's left of him. Mm -hmm. Like the body, basically. Where is it? Oh, yeah, that, that. right here. <laughs> this is Jesus. Corpus. Corpus. <laughs> <laughs>
Hermit. 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 One. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't have a permit. <laughs> Petr, Gaba, Irka. They came with us today. Thank you.